Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And here we are again. It's Monday night, it is 9 o'clock, it is 10-Year Tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the ever-capable Modmaster, that is Mark. This week, um, you may notice a difference, I've had a bit of a shift around. Um, I've moved a lot of stuff about um, and, and basically I've made this a nicer space to be in. Um, going forwards I think I'm going to be looking at potentially ditching the green screen stuff. Um, it was an absolute pain in the bum to set up. So we're going with sheddiness, um, full blown sheddiness. Um, and yes, whereas before I used to sit over there somewhere um, and film that way, uh, I'm now at the end so I can get a view down the uh, down the length as it were um, yes I know it's in your chat you're not having that drill that's that's a good drill I like that drill um, this week uh, obviously we've, we've had quite a few uh, quite a few developments this week haven't we we've had the uh, the we're in the third year now of, of Vapor Trails TV um, I'm in my second year um, and uh, things keep just getting better um, what are we going to be looking at this week um, myself I uh, We've been looking at a, a couple of bits, and I've been looking at, um, I'm going to call them Mod Basics, um, taking it back to, if you like, back to paper. And I know you guys quite enjoyed uh, looking at, um, guess the drawing as they were happening. Um, and that's what we're looking at, you know, taking things back to, to basics rather than, you know, wires and solder and, and just drawing stuff out. Um, we've got one of those coming up. I finally. Um, unbox my, uh, my my DNA 20 um, which I'm not sure if I told you guys I, I have one but I, I do um, so we're gonna be having a look at that and uh, I sent some kit over to uh, to mark to have a look at so he is going to be uh, basically making a nice little uh, it's, it's quite a big board I'm not sure whether you've seen it or not but uh, all will become clear as we go into our vids now I've got a lot to get through tonight so I'm gonna crack straight on um, and he reaches forward because it's a long way to the bench um, and I'm going into my first little bit now I'll catch you guys back after this right so when I left, left you uh, last week I was playing with the uh, if you like the the mini massive uh, wires and, and arc welding kit I'm gonna put that to one side um, for, for now um, purely because I just don't have the time this week to, uh, to house it all in a case that aside, I've I've seen uh, another mod made with one of these um, that I, I may well have a play with. Um, don't know if I film or not, but you can use this circuit to effectively um, power a low energy light bulb uh, by removing the cap, a few components, and wiring it up in in a strange and wonderful way. Um, and I believe with one of these energy efficient light bulbs, you can get about eight hours off off a single AA battery using that board. So I'm gonna have a play with that. That's gonna be another thing. If it works, I'll come back and show you. But I'm not gonna film it because it's nothing at all related with vaping. Moving onwards, following on from uh, from a couple of weeks ago, where where we did the um, a little piece on on showing mods, if you like, um, in in their basic terms, people have asked me, can I sort of show you, if you like, the principle behind a uh, a tube mod? Now, tube mods are tubular in shape, as they would be, um, and I get to do my uh, my wonderful little uh, my diagrams again. Um, so. Let's draw, if you like, our tube. It's going to be rather a big tube. Our tube. Now, pretty much what most tube mods have in common is they use the uh, the body, be it stainless steel, aluminium, or whatever, to carry your currents um, from either your neg or your pos end of your battery up to your atomizer connection. So we've got our atty connection sitting in the top there. Now effectively, if this is um, press fitted in, in the top of the mod, you've already got a decent connection to the body. Um, you know, as you can see there, if it's press fitted in, you, you've got a nice flow of your, your currents running around, around there. What they will tend to do is, uh, th there are other ways of doing it. Um, depending on which way, as I say, you've got your battery up and down, normally what you'd have in here is an insert of type, that would have a little nipple or a drop through screw which will go all the way through there and that connects up to your positive pin. So as you can see we've got a neg which is earthed against the uh, the body of the mod 
and our centre pin on our connection going down to a little nipple and our battery will sit inside here. So this is going to be a damn big battery. Let's draw our battery in. Obviously with this one here what I'd probably do on there is set my battery up here, nipples going up there, yeah. so your battery's inside your mod and obviously that's going to make either a contact there or there depending on which way you've got it spinning round. So as you can see you've got one of your pins which is actually there all the time. Now with a case of how do we switch the, uh, the negative voltage, there's a very simple way of doing that um, and if you've got a, uh, let me do, just slide this along, let's just draw in here and I'll, I'll do it a bit bigger so you get the principle of the idea. Let's just draw in a, if you like, a, a switch. And there's a little knob for the switch. And the way that I've done them in the past with the torches, I've actually used the switch, if the threading's the same, as, as the bottom cap. So this would screw in and make a contact there. Now, you'd normally got your two little prongs coming up that you'd make your contacts across for your switch. What I've done in the past is literally, if this is uh, metal, as you're threading, if this is a, a metal switch, you can actually connect very carefully one of your pins actually to the body of the switch. So form a link round. So you're actually connecting one pin to the body. Now the purpose of this is obviously now when that switch is screwed in, You've already got one pin of your switch connected to the to the body of the mod. What I've then done is taken a, if you like, a, a nipple from a battery housing and soldered that across the top of one of the pins on the battery. On the battery, on the switch. Then obviously insulated between these because under pressure you don't want that to push down and, and force the contact. So if you look at that, what you've actually got is this bit here is screwed into the body of the mod. Um, you're not actually, your battery is going to be sitting on the switch there. In this case we're switching the negative. So you've got your negative end of your battery sitting down on the switch. Now when that's screwed in, obviously you're not getting any charge from the battery going up through the body of the mod until you press this button. So when you make the contact on, on the switch, you're completing the circuit with the bottom of the battery and the housing because we're earthed here to the body of the switch onto the housing of our mod. In principle, that's, that's one way of, of, uh, of looking at them. The, the other way is you know, pretty much the same principle. If you look at, um, for example, uh, a re very rough sketch of, of if you like, the... Um, the way that the, the GG works, for example, is when you, you screw your, uh, your AT in, you've already got a, uh, a connection with the bottom of the battery. Again, it's the same sort of scenario, but it's broken, and when you actually push that switch down, you're hitting a pin. So, sort of that scenario with your button here. But when you're actually pushing that down, it's making contact with the pin, which is in contact with the housing. So a very, very simple sort of way of, of, of looking at them. Um, I tend to prefer you know, this method, and again, that will work if you've got a tube um, and you, you've got a torch, for example, and you want to get a switch uh, in the side. Same principle. Um, you can switch your, your neg on, on the, uh, you know, the, the casing up to your atomizer connection. Very, very, very simple to do. Um, and again, literally, by soldering one of the tabs to your body of your battery and the other tab is going to be in contact with the battery. So this, this one in your housing, this one on the battery, press the switch and you complete the circuit. Um, all of your currents being going up through the body and a simple straight through pin from your one end of your battery up to your, uh, up to your atomizer connection. At your connection again, earthed against the body of the mod, pressing the switch completes the circuit. Hopefully that was uh, sort of explained well, um, and that did answer your question if you have posed that to me. Um, I better get on with actually trying to do something. Uh, I will come back in two.
Right, I thought I'd start things a little differently this week. Uh, originally I was going to do a completely different mod, but Gary very kindly sent me some bits to play with, so I couldn't resist playing with them. So, what I've got here is a VV board, step down board, with a built in display. Now I've just quickly wired it up to a pair of batteries and I've connected it up to the multimeter just so you can check what it's displaying against what it says. And a little bit awkward, but in this position. I'll put it at 4.4, volt meter read is 4.4. Seems to be fairly accurate, at least when it's not under load. And also you've got the option of pressing the button and it will tell you the total voltage in the batteries which is currently 8.4 as they're fully charged and in series or stacked if you prefer so quick press and back to that uh, what I intend to do is wire this up and it has a nice little jumper here which if you remove kills the display but you still get your output just the same and you pop the bag on and you get your display so what I'm going to do is add a little latch switch button next to it which you can press on and off so you can have the display off when, you're not, when it's not needed and then just quick press and it will give you a display and to save power I'll be switching the input so we'll go from the batteries through a switch into the board and out to your atomizer very simply. It will mean that you need to press the switch if you want to see what's on the display, but it will also mean that there will be no power going to this when the button's not pressed so it won't be wasting energy. So that's what I'm intending to do. And one thing I should mention is this is rather a large board, it's about the same size as two 18650 batteries, so it needs something bigger to put it in. But luckily pound shop around here has a nice two ounce Rizla tin which I think will go rather nicely for this and that will all fit in there with plenty of room to spare so that's what we'll be using so I think the layout's going to be something like this with the battery holder across the bottom and the board up next to it and that should give me access to everything nicely and the atomizer connector and the switch are going to go on this end panel here so it's basically going to be a top button because I prefer it that way than having to press it that way I'll put it down flat, it'll sit flat uh, one thing you need to remember this is a metal case these electronics, we're going to have to insulate this somehow from this metal otherwise nothing's going to work and what I'll probably do is when I come to set everything in, I'm going to put a layer of clear epoxy all the way across the base and set this into it. And that'll protect it from the case and give a nice strong base to everything. So, first job I'm going to have to do is drill some holes. Uh, I've already marked up with some masking tape where I want the two holes to go. And what I'm thinking is we're going to want the button here and the atomizer there. Uh, you possibly can't see them where I've marked, but it will when I drill the holes, I suppose. So, I'll first off with the pilot hole in each. this to the depth I need first of all for the atomizer connector 
So I'll drill that one first. Drilling the holes in uh, metal cases like this, the one thing you need to avoid is putting too much pressure on. Just let the drill do the work rather than trying to force it through. Now for the switch, I'm going to want everything except for the very last step. So that's nice and easy to do. on the inside. You need to file them off or sand them away a bit before you work on it. Otherwise you can get yourself a nasty cut. And there we go, we're back in the room again. And yes, they are the uh, the ambient tones of, of modding, um, I think we're going to call them. And they may well make their way on the uh, the ambient tones of modding CD1 for this Christmas, um, including the Dremel, the, uh, the, the pillar drill, and um, the sander. Uh, and of course, I don't know if you watched it a little while ago, Mark's extremely fast wrist action. Wrist, wrist action. Um, yeah, hoping you guys are, uh, are liking the new layout. Um, it cost me half a day I think trying to uh, to shift stuff around um, and endless wires and only finished tonight just in time to get everything rigged back up for this um, I'm gonna pop now into our first little uh, first little ad break well, we'll come back after this and um, see where we go from there Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Those ads are far too short. Um, yes, uh, barely time to uh, to break a sweat during that little ad break. But yeah, I do apologise for my attire this evening. This was the only thing that the wife actually had managed to wash this week, um, and officially um, she's grounded until she finishes the remainder of the washing basket. Um, this one is normally reserved for gardening and uh, other duties that don't involve absolutely you know looking anywhere near half decent. It looks like a, sort of like a French criminal, I believe has been pointed out in chat. I do apologise. Um, I will blame the wife. Moving rapidly onwards, I finally get my hands on uh, on the DNA20. Um, 
And to be honest, after after watching, the, you know, reading a few threads and this, that and the other, um, I was absolutely bricking it for some reason. I, I don't know why. Um, it's one of those one of those little boards that I was so so keen to get my hands on. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it before, um, but I do have one, and here it is in all its glory, um, especially for you guys. Well, I don't know if you guys uh, knew, but um, I've got a DNA board. And um, this is my my journey on the uh, on the on the DNA. Um, won't be doing uh, much today because I'm still waiting on some of the the, the tooling to come. But uh, what I thought I would do is just give you a uh, a little guide uh, around the board itself. Um, I'm going to put some power through it um, and test that it's all working um, before I, I start sizing up my my new home for this board, as it were. So, just looking down on, on the board here, um, we have uh, very simply um, in here, on this side here, we've got our pos and our minus um, for our, our battery in. Now you can see sort of how small the uh, the pins are here. Um, this is a, obviously a nib of a ballpoint pen. Um, so there, there is our, our input voltage here. On the other side of the board here, we have a, a charge input. Now I believe this is to be linked up with the uh, with the USB charging module that's also available for this board. We've got our plus and our minus here, or our up and our down, um, for I would imagine sticking our watts up or down. On this side here, we, we've got uh, three wires here. Now this can be used in in either or configuration. Um, this can be used uh, for if you like an analog pot. Um, you know, a, a twisty job. Uh, turn the knob, it goes up. Turn the knob, it goes down. Um, or you can use this for an up and uh, a down um, switch to be installed. Although you've got an up and a down uh, on the board here, they do say uh, you know probably better off if you can to rig out onto some other switches. I mean, it gives you loads of options. Obviously, you could put these with some pads to press these switches, um, providing they're not uh, you know. They're very highly rated. The whole the whole lot is, I believe, um, water resistant, as far as I can tell from from the uh, from the bits I've read. And very simply, um, up here you do have a couple of pins here for your fire button. Um, now, as we were talking earlier, if you were going to put this in in a scenario where you're having a a tube mod and uh, and a fire button, you could again uh, it wouldn't sort of really matter in this particular board because this is the fire it actually has a dedicated point so you can't be earthing off things or you may be able to you could take one pin I'm not 100% sure um, I would have to double check whether you could use that in this scenario I, I would imagine you could and simply your, your output on the other end up there plus and a minus which will go out to your uh, to your AT connection um, we have a display sorry Mark on the board as well, just down there. What I'm going to do is, uh, is firstly let me show you my housing or my proposed housing. I'm looking at, I, you probably might recognise this, this was actually a box uh, that I modded for somebody on, on a previous show, um, inserting the, uh, the gold plated switch. Um, I've since uh, sort of adapted it to take a kick, so I've got a, a little plate down inside there. Let me just zoom down so you can have a look. So we've got a little copper plate down inside there um, that was so I could have the kick running in here. Um, lovely little mod. Now looking at this, um, it will probably make a nice home for my DNA 20. It may well change, I don't know, I've got various boxes on order, this that, and the other, but looking at this initially, um, it is looking like a, a viable option. It would mean I've got to take, um, and this is where I, I twinge ever so slightly, it means I've got to take some, some of the wood out here, probably take it down to exactly where it would do, uh, recite the, uh, the little magnet down in here to, to on the end, but that also means I'm going to have to recite my magnet down inside here. It may well hold, I'm not sure, but you know, might have to put me a little magnet, reposition this up there, fill that back. Not 100% sure. 
as I say, I'm, this is my first look at this. It was, it was sat there staring at me and I thought, now that would be nice. The other thing that's ever so slightly worrying for me is I would like to have my display um, on this edge here. Now, you know me and wood and, and that means that I've got to be uh, taking this out ever so slightly to, to get the display through. Um, and I'm sort of thinking if I can have the display down in there. Um, now, that to me posed one of two problems. Uh, first problem being this is this is quite a thick uh, wall here. So I'm, I've got to sort of uh, recess out a small amount so the, the display is visible on this side. Um, and also recess out a bigger bit for the actual display to fit in. That causes me one or two problems purely because I've got to, re I've got to recess this in. Um, so I'm not 100% sure whether this is, is going to be uh, the housing yet, I don't know. But I'm going to strip it down and, and have a look and, and see. Um, but yeah, again, I will probably then, because I'm going to be mounting the display effectively down inside there, um, I'm going to have to uh, look at potentially. I was looking at if I was to wrap this around the back of the board and, and sort of mount, he's being so careful with this, you wouldn't believe, um, mount this around the back of the board here um, and tap it on there, which means I could seat the whole lot up against the wall there um, and then take a couple of switches off uh, for my up and down problem with that again it means that, that I would have to open this up to uh, to change my wattage every time I wanted to change the wattage I've got to open that up not not so much a problem for me uh, because once I've got my wattage set on, on a device I tend to stick to it um, but so yes yeah, some, some of the initial sort of not problems but bits I'm facing and bits I'm, I'm looking at in doing this switch will work exactly the same I can link this switch across um, to my, my my fire button um, and I'll have to take off like I showed earlier there is a dedicated bit for the ATI uh, connection which I'd have to solder on here batteries stay exactly or the battery stays exactly the same as where it is but I'm thinking to give me more room to play with I'm definitely gonna you know maybe maybe work to taking it up to there to give me sort of a, a couple of more what centimeter and a bit to play with to get that fit in but I'm, I'm going through if you like, the, the thought process of, of what I'm looking at um, before I, I jump ahead and, and start mullering a perfectly good box because it would be absolutely, uh, absolutely criminal um, to wreck this thing. Again, I may have to... I don't know. I really don't know. I may look at doing something custom um, until I start dissecting. I really won't know. Um, am I prepared to being a perfectly good mod if it all goes wonky don't know should I risk it I'll let you decide I'll see what you the feedback is tonight do I muller this or not I think is going to be the question do I question to all you watching and chat leave your comments um, let me know do I muller the box in the interest of science or don't I I'll come back after this and uh, I'm going to try and link some power up to the uh, to the board that's well, the way for now I just didn't check for size so I'll pop in there and if I've marked it out right it's, it's flush with the edge slightly these two corners so that it fits in better. I'm just going to do that with a knife. And remembering which way around I need it. And these two corners off. Just be 
fold there. Cut it off, preferably in thin parts. Keep your fingers well out of the way, of course. Take a massive amount off, this one. Make life a little bit easier for fitting into the casing. I think I'm a bit too far there, but come on, mate. makes life easier we can actually see what you're doing. So clear away any debris as you go. Now put this pop that in that sits fairly close to the edge now that should be perfect. And that's gonna gonna want to go up to the switch. This in together there, in place now before I solder. If I can manage to get it out. you got your pins in a nice accessible position. So now this wire needs to go to one side of the switch. from this side. Just to make sure it stays out of the way of the other connector. So the last thing you're going to want to do is have a short. Oh, there we go. So that's that in place. Now I need to tin up these two ends because the, I'm going to use these screw points. It's a lot easier just to screw them in if the wires are pinned nice and solid.
And there we go, we're back in the room once again. So yeah, we're moving on quite rapidly. Um, and I'm going to pop into the air brakes when I come back. I need to have a little talk with you guys. Um, be back after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And there we go. Just reading some of the comments in chat. There is no need to be worried, guys. Um, I am not going to beat you with a stick and uh, and introduce you to my uh, my wire welding device. Um, although I would like to with some of you, um, but we'll leave that for another time. Um, no, very quickly before we move on, um, we have two very good members. We have lots of very good members of our team, um, but we have two very good members, Sav and Daz, who have taken upon the mission. Uh, to enter the, uh, if you like, the, the social media side of things. Um, they are, you know, we're going to be looking at, at potentially posting up um, updates and, and a lot more sort of uh, frequent bits and pieces as to where we are with uh, with the shows. And if, if you follow us on Facebook, um, you would have seen um, past couple of days, those updates have been coming thick and fast. Um, so we would ask you as our viewers, if you wouldn't mind sharing and tweeting and, and doing what you do, because um, we know you guys love doing that stuff, apparently. Um, yeah, I've never tweeted myself. I haven't got a clue. I wouldn't even know how to tweet myself. Um, when someone said, tweet me, I totally took it wrong once and then got arrested. Um, but anyway, that's a long story. Uh, yeah, but if you do see those, please share, follow and all that sort of stuff. Um, I am going to go into our next little set of videos. Um, and it was at this point that I did get uh, get a little bit personal with, with the DNA. And um, yes, I was... Uh, yeah, a little bit concerned, I should we say. Okay, so I'm back and um, I'm going to start just... Um, I always I have a habit of, of, of doing this whenever I'm working with, with something new, something like this, is to almost um, work outside of, of my box first, to test my connections, to test I know that the, the board is is going to work. Um, worst thing in the world actually, putting something together, hitting the, the button and, and nothing happens. So I always tend to do a quick um, put together outside of the box as it were, which is what I'm doing here. I'm just soldering up a couple of, I've got a temporary um, battery box. Um, no, I'm just going to put a little um, IMR 18 650 um, battery into. No, it's not. 14500. Oh, God. And I've got a couple of little switches here um, that I'm going to uh, turn up and, and just put on the board because I, I do want to run some external switches on this for the um, for my power up and down. Let's just tin those up. And he's absolutely, uh, 
don't know, bricking it, not bricking it, but this, this is a, a nice piece of kit, this board, and I want to do it some justice if I can. Um, it's it's going to be a mod that, that I want to keep. Um, I don't keep many, but but this one I will. You know, if you, if you go back to the uh, to the to the guys last week when they were doing the um, second anniversary of uh, of VT TV, and everybody was talking about mods that they've had for a long time. Um, for me, I, I very rarely keep mods for for a great period of time. Um, but you know, the ones that I do keep are are if you like. Special to me, and I want this one to be special to me. What I'm going to do is, and and I don't want to uh, rub in Mark's pain, but he has suggested, and, and I know it's happened to to a couple of people. Be very careful of this strip. Um, be very careful when you're you're working this. Is you know he says, and and a couple of people have said it, it doesn't take much for it to come off. You, you've got to obviously pay respect to the display. Um, I know a couple of people on the forums have, have said as well they've they've managed to uh, to lose theirs. Now I'm going to very carefully, um, I've loosened this off, I'm just going to tack, hold that in the grips very 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 gently and I'm going to just go down on here and I'm just going to tin up um, my pos and minus on the uh, on the battery terminals here. Now I can clean these out afterwards. What I'm going to do is just tack on the top for now. And again, with your iron, you've got to be very careful of this this ribbon um, right next to it here, um, which is obviously where your display is is held onto. And I'm just going to tin in a couple of loops. And I need to bring in my battery holder. Now, for some reason, my tin isn't taken in there so let me just get a bit down in a bit down in there so I've got my pos and my minus for my battery terminals now as I say I'm just tacking these on the top for now just to prove my my board out of it now I've got a bit too much solder on there don't know much Again, this looks ropey soldering, but I will be uh, I will be taking these off again just to prove them outside of the board. Now, what I've got down in here, I'm going to add just a couple of little switches. Again, being very careful of where you do. Now. As I said on this side of the board, these two here are for if you're adding, if you like a uh, an external switch. This top one here is, I believe, the pos for the uh, pedometer. So I'm just going to add these two in very gently. There's one switch. Just get another switch over the other side. And again, this is just to prove my my layout. Now I won't use switches this size for this at all, but I suppose you could do. So I have my yeah, couple of switches installed on there, and I've got my my battery pack in. So let me fire, let me chuck a battery. Now I'm not sure the state of charge of this battery, but you should be using, uh, I believe, a battery with a rating of at least 7 amps. Now just for the, a test, I'm not going to put it under any load. I've got a little AW14500 and I've got my display which has come up there. Which is showing me that I'm set to 8 watts. And I've got no load, obviously, because I've got no no resistor on there. Now, by touching my my bits here on the board, these two little pins, they're very tricky to press. There you go, 8.7, 8.6, 8.4, and this one here is is the up, so I should be able to dip those 
ridiculous those ones. Mm, mm, mm. I've got a dodgy switch. No, there we go. And I'm going up that side. I'm also just going to try my. Now, what's this? This is a down. So, this is my external little switch that I've put on here. And let me just test that going down. Oh, look at that, it works. 919, it says me down switch. And let me just press me up switch here. Nine watts, ten watts, eleven watts. What if you hold it? It goes down. Oh, it does. If you hold it, it just drops down quick. There we go. Right, two nine one. Now, tell you what I might do. I might actually go go the full hog on this and actually um, wire something up. I'm not sure if I will or not. But the good the good thing is. I've proved my, my board, if you like, outside of the mod. I know that it's working, I know I've got my displays, um, battery indicator is is working, everything's working, and so is my little external switches, and that is the way that I want to run this, you know, I believe, I don't know if they start at 7 watts this one, doesn't it? Yeah, it won't go any lower than, lower than 7 watts. Um, but as I say, you can adjust it with these two on the board quite easily but um, that would be quite fiddly doing that inside a mod so you know and you can see you've got to get it in the right place to hit it they're tiny now I don't think that's going to cause me too much problem because you know, I normally as I say have it set at a wattage and, and go from there it's only when See that it's really fiddly that button to press. There you go. You've got to get it bang on. But essentially, I've proved my uh, my board outside of the uh, outside of the um, the mod. Um, next thing is I've got to decide whether I'm going to be putting it in in this or not. Um, I would love to be able to get it in here, um, but. I'm waiting on you. Do I do I muller this or not? If you haven't sort of told me already, or add to the add to the comments. I will I will be driven by the comments in uh, on the replay video or in chat whether you want me to see or you want to see me put the uh, or attempt to put that in here. Now, bearing in mind there may be a lot of uh, a lot of breakage of of the box. Um, with that, back to me. Plan there. I'm going to do this the sensible way and solve it before I put it in. So I'm going to quickly screw this onto a cardamizer, cardamizer. and then Done. Easy as that. Let that cool off. And the other thing that will wire up is the large switch. I've got an old connector from the computer which will fit under the jumper nicely. A couple of wires and I've added a couple of bits of heat shrink to cover everything when I've done. So, 
once again, it's going to the turn up. Turn up the way I connect this. And the wires. shrink back over the connectors when I'm done. purposes. One it protects the giant and the other it insulates it. And I just need a heat source now. And okay. it's sort of working, it's about worn out now. I'll just at a at a distance. I just want the heat to go in the general direction. connector. Done. Oh, I just need to snip off the other point because I'm not going to be using that. And I'm ready to put everything together. First job I want to do is to fix this in on me. I want to do that with clear epoxy. And as Gary hears this stuff so much, she's gonna love this. So a trusty piece of card to mix it with. I'm gonna do this in sections because trying to mix up a full batch of epoxy then get it all in here before it sets, it just isn't possible. So small amounts, relatively small amounts anyway, work much better. And 
once you're done. And I'll be back once that's dried. And I do believe that will be drying for at least a week because we are rapidly approaching the end of our little hour. Um, if you do want to uh, sort of catch up on on the uh, on the mods we're making, we are going to be posting, if you like, update pictures on on the the uh, VTTV Facebook page. And I believe uh, Mark has taken some vids and uh, some vids. He's taken some pictures, so we'll get those on there. See, remembered Mark. I know I would. Um, Yes, so don't forget, uh, for the remainder of this week, we have, tomorrow night, uh, we have, let's see, I'm all over the place now, going bonkers, Vapor Scene, <laughs> got tomorrow, VT Talk, uh, following day, Haze Hour on Thursday, and back again on Sunday for Dave's Tackle Box. I believe Dave is, uh, he's out and about again tonight on another little mini-me, um, can't keep the guy indoors. So hopefully you guys have uh, have enjoyed. I'm going to call it a new format, um, you know, new layout, this that, and the other. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep that uh, keep that where we are. Um, hopefully no more green screens. It's been a lot less stressful for myself. Um, you know, previously it was coming home and uh, and going bonkers trying to set green screens up and lighting and this that, and the other. I've got a flashlight in my face and it seems to be working. Um, unfortunately, you guys have got to watch it. Um, but yeah, it seems to be going well. With all that said, uh, next week um, I will be either uh, modding something for the DNA to, to go into or I will be attempting to uh, totally muller that lovely uh, wooden box. Um, I'm going to wait on your input and uh, I'll be ordering up some, some tooling to, uh, to muller the box. Um, as you've, you've probably watched before, my woodworking skills are... A little bit to be uh, desired I'm gonna say um, there is potential that it could all go wrong um, I don't even know the layout yet I'm, I'm gonna have to have a good look at it and a good think this week and uh, and see exactly how I want to do that not 100% sure um, but it looks quite good I mean I've been following some of the threads on, on the forums about the uh, about the DNA mods and, and the way that people are uh, sort of uh, a very good one on UK vapors going in a uh, uh, sort of like an alley case um, so there's, there's loads. There's loads of bits and pieces out there to go and have a look at. Um, don't forget, you can catch our shows on, on the replays, uh, in the forum, go to the replay section, tin your tip, and don't forget to share and Facebook us all if you can. And uh, the Twitter thing, which I don't quite get, but I'm sure Daz does, and Sav. Uh, with all that said, it has been emotional, guys. I'm going to love you and leave you tonight. I hope you enjoyed tonight's show, and I will catch you next week. Cheers now. Good night. Tin Your Tip with Gary Dibley.